On September 11, 2011, three people were found murdered in Waltham apartment. The victims all had their throats slashed, and to this day, the case remains unsolved. Police indicated at the time that it appeared to be a drug deal gone very bad, citing the fact that all three victims sold marijuana. But others think there's a lot more to the story, as is explored in a new Hulu documentary. When the Waltham murders happened on September 11th, 2011, clearly the police didn't seem to give much thought to the idea that the date would be significant, that this was a ritualistic act. It would appear that the resources necessary to bring this investigation to a very quick and successful conclusion were not devoted to that investigation. The series is Murders Before the Marathon because the journalist at the center believes that if the Waltham case had been solved, it would have prevented the Boston Marathon bombings a year and a half later. That journalist is Susan Zalkin, who, in full disclosure, used to be my intern when I hosted a TV show on NECN, and has since gone on to report for This American Life, Boston Magazine, The Guardian, The Daily Beast, Vice, and more. Susan, it's great to see you, and congratulations. It's really amazing. Did I make you proud yet? Uh, we'll see how this interview goes, and we'll take <laughs> it from there. How and why did you get involved in this thing? Uh, well, I looked, it was the most unusual murder case in New England I'd, I'd ever heard in decades and decades. I started looking into it, and then I found out one of the victims was my friend. How long did, a period of time was it from the point that you first read about it online, I think at NECN, as a matter of fact, uh, until you found out that one of the three victims had been somebody you'd been pretty close to? It was a, a few days. I saw uh, posts on Facebook that I, I didn't want to believe them at first about RIP Hetty E, and then I, I got the email from the Middlesex DA, and I saw the name Eric Wiseman, and I was praying it was a different Eric Wiseman. But it wasn't. A year and a half later, the Boston Marathon, how aggressively would you say law enforcement pursued the people responsible for those murders in that year and a half? I mean, this, that's one of the focus of the story is that it appears not to have been aggressively investigated at all. Um, this was one of the most unusual homicides I'd heard of in the New England area in decades. You'd think that they would put all of their resources into finding out what happened and apparently that wasn't the case. Well, as part of the lack of uh, being aggressive here, Tamerlan Sarnayev, who everybody knows is one of the two people responsible for the murders on, at the marathon in April of 2013, was a close friend of uh, 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 one of the people who was murdered in Waltham. From what I understand from you and others, a number of people said Tamerlan Sarnayev is somebody who should be spoken to. Was he? Uh, apparently he was not. Um, we, there are a number of reasons why Tamerlan Sarnayev should have been questioned. Another, what are they? Well, for one, he's close friends with the victims. Mm -hmm. For another thing, you think about the physicality of this crime. How do you take three men down? Brendan Mess had a purple belt in jiu-jitsu. He went to the Y crew. One of the victims. He One of the victims. He went to the Y crew gym three or four times a week. And do you know who he trained with? Tamerlan Sarnayev. So even without people close to this case handing Tamerlan Sarnayev's Sarnayev's name to investigators on a silver platter. Don't you think investigators should have gone to the gym? Well, in addition to going to the gym, correct me if I'm uh, wrong, he was very close with Brendan Mess. And one of the other odd things, according to some friends, and I think objective people, he didn't go to the funeral. He that didn't. didn't pique any interest he in was the best, law enforcement either. He was best friends and star sparring partners with Brendan Mess. Okay, so fast forward to April 15th, 2013. We all know about the horror of the murders. A month later, I think I got the time right, a guy we had never heard of, Ibrahim Todashev, Todashev, is in an apartment, a condo or something in Orlando. He's being questioned, Orlando, Florida, being questioned by an FBI agent, state police from Massachusetts were present there as well. He's murdered, uh, shot, I should say, and killed, uh, to be fair, by the FBI agent. What did Tadashev tell them before he was shot and killed? I mean, this has been the focus of my investigation for years to figure out exactly what Ibrahim Tadashev said. Allegedly, according to documents, he implicated himself and Tamerlan Sarnayev in the Waltham triple homicide. And he was uh, uh, apparently in the midst of doing some sort of confession? When he was shot seven times, including once in the top of the head. And what kind of explanation have we got? I, there, are, How many cops or how many law enforcement people were in the room? There were three. Three people in the room and him. Uh, were the police officers armed? 
They were, I mean, the, one of the focuses of this docu-series and my work is that the Middlesex was in charge of this investigation. There was a... Middlesex County here. There was an ADA officer who told the men after Ibrahim Tadashev confessed not to put him in cuffs. There was no arrest plan for confronting a trained fighter in his own home about a gruesome triple homicide connected to the Boston Marathon bombing. How many times was he shot? Seven. Seven times in his apartment. In his own home. And this is a man with a track record of violence. For me, there's a four and a half interview. Knowing what I know now about Ibrahim Tadashev, it's surprising to me that he wouldn't have attacked those men sooner rather than later. What did you tell us a little bit? What do you know now about Tadashev that obviously none of us knew because none of us ever heard of him before this? What do you know? Well, he was an aspiring MMA fighter. He had also tra trained at the Y Crew mm -hmm. gym with Tamerlan Sarnayev, and he had a hair trigger temper. Someone would insult his mother. He'd be ready to fight 17 people. There was a paper trail of, again, uh, car incidents where he would throw fisticuffs. Two weeks before he was shot, he beat a man bloody in the parking lot, sent him home in a stretcher over a parking space. The investigators knew that about Ibrahim Tadashev when they went to the room to question him that evening. And you did a hell of a lot of research and investigation into whether or not uh, Tadashev was even here at the time of the triple murders. And despite some people close to him suggesting he was not, what did you conclude on that front? Well, because the nature of this interview was so suspicious, you have a man killed in the middle of the confession, I needed to find information separately from the shooting reports confirming whether or not Ibrahim Tadashev was in Boston at the time of the murders. Initially, people close to him said that he was not, there was an alibi, eventually, the story changed, and I found out he was in Boston at the time of the murders, and he left two days later with a stack of cash. So let, let's do time frames again for a minute. A little more than a year and a half from the triple murders in Waltham, the marathon bombing and all the mayhem that came with it, April of 2013, I think it's May of 2013, this incident happens with Tadashev. Does this investigation pick up any steam after this guy says that one of the two marathon bombers was my partner in a triple murder in Waltham? No, no, and no. And I would love for the Middlesex County District Attorney's Office to prove me wrong on this point, to, to at least account for how much they did and did not investigate this case before the marathon bombing and after the fact. And we're going to talk in a minute about that. They've not been terribly forthcoming because they say it's an open investigation. Is that their line? Exactly. Okay. And, and this vacuum, I guess you can call it a vacuum, that was left by the fact that law enforcement didn't fill it was, Can I just say yeah, one thing? You sure. think about you think Dan Daniel Masti, who's in the interview mm -hmm. say, in the docu series, saying, "I told them about Tamerlan Sarnayev back then. He had talked to law enforcement. He still hasn't been questioned. Mm. Law enforcement did not go back to him after the bombing and say, "Hey." You told us this tip then, why don't we talk about it now? That still hasn't happened. So when I say that this is not being thoroughly investigated, I know that because I'm talking to people with crucial information about this case who have not been contacted by law enforcement. And by the way, they're in the documentary. You can hear them in their own words. It's not just channeling through you. I started to say it was a vacuum was created by virtue of the law enforcement not filling it, and some people who we see in the news quite frequently, not in the most pleasant of ways, filled it, like who, for example? Alex Jones? It was, well, exactly. I mean, that was part of what motivated me to find answers, be, was because there was no information from law enforcement, anyone in power. Instead, there was this vacuum where you have RT News and Alex Jones spreading misinformation. Russia Today. Russia like, Today. Yeah. And a lot of those uh, conspiracy theories live on today. You know, uh, uh, I know you don't like this question very much. We discussed this when you are on the radio with me and Marjorie Egan a couple of weeks ago. Uh, there are two why questions. Uh, uh, why, in your estimation, and I know it's purely conjecture on your part, was law enforcement so uninterested in solving this case, and their behavior suggests that, prior to uh, what happened in Orlando, Florida, but much more confusing to me, why the, con well, not confusing to me, I should say, the lack of interest afterwards is obviously they would have been humiliated had the dots been connected and it had been clear, had they pursued Tamerlan and Sarnayev, there would have been a different outcome. But why in those intervening, whatever it was, 18 months, 16 months, why after the Waltham murders was there such little interest in your estimation? I think those are 
a very important question, the why question, but what we haven't accounted for is the fact that it was not thoroughly investigated. And when you come up with um, the why question is great, but if you don't have solid information, and I will have more information in my book, you can almost distract people. Uh, you had this with the uh, propaganda that was spread by Russia Today, and you had politicians asking the FBI, was Tamerlan Tsarnaev an informant? They were wondering why he wasn't questioned uh, after there was a tip from Russia mm. about his uh, his radicalization. In Dagestan. Exactly. So, yeah. Exactly. Why wasn't he questioned? Uh, and the the focus on all of that questioning was, was he an FBI informant, rather than why was this national security issue not thoroughly addressed? Well, the fact that it happened, it, I, what I'm saying is, rather than why, we haven't addressed the fact that there are these lapses. Yeah, and by the way, speaking of lapses, also lapses in inf information uh, disclosure to you, but what you told us recently is there's actually some good news. The dam appears to be breaking to a degree? To a degree, after three, How so? after three appeals in a public information request asking Middlesex to turn over their records, the Secretary of State has sided with me and asked Middlesex to turn over all of their records to the Secretary of State. Are they doing that? It looks like there's conversations, and to Mary and Ryan's credit, it looks like they're taking action to comply with that order. And do we ever see what is delivered to Bill Galvin or what? Well, that's, well that, what, that's what will happen next. The Middlesex says that none of it's admissible. The Secretary of State will now look at that information and see what is then admissible to me. So in the 10 years of work, and it has been 10 years of almost constant work, your involvement in this thing, are you convinced beyond a reasonable doubt that Tamerlan Sarnaya was involved in the triple murders in Waltham? Absolutely. Absolutely. And is it anything but fair for me to say that if you're right and that crime had been solved, that Lingji Liu, Martin Richard, Crystal Campbell, Sean Collier, and a lot of broken bodies would have been spared? That connection, I mean, that is 100% the case if you were right. It's terrible, but it's true. I don't see any other reasonable explanation for what happened. Your work is terrific. The documentary is too. Susan Zalkine. How'd I do? Uh, you did excellently well. <laughs> A proud former intern. Susan Zalkine.